What is up everybody? Doomwick here. Welcome back to another modern video on the channel. As always, before we continue, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. Let me know in the comment section below what you thought of the video. Today, I'm going to be bringing you a deck list that was actually submitted to me by a user. Uh, we do donation decks on the Twitch channel every Thursday for uh, $20. Person submits a deck list to me. We kind of talk it over before Thursday, see if there's any changes that I want to make. Um, and then, you know, kind of run the deck through a five-round league on Magic Online, talk about the deck afterwards, see what we like, what we didn't like. And... This is uh, a deck that I've seen some people piloting in the modern leagues and having some, you know, a couple 5-0 results. I think maybe a top 32 in a challenge. And I was pretty excited to play something like this. And this is uh, Mardu Stoneblade. I've had a lot of people ask me about Stoneforge Mystic specifically and its place within the modern format. Um, Stoneforge Mystic by itself... I think is in not in the best spot because everybody is so well equipped to deal with Ragavan and DRC that they're just loading up on cheap removal. That's usually where Stoneforge Mystic gets a little bit worse. However, when you combine it with Ragavan and you can have the one-two punch of Ragavan into Stoneforge, you're now presenting two threats that your opponent has to answer on the spot or else the game is likely just going to slip out of control. So, you know, when you're combining those two together, it makes a lot more sense. So that's what we're doing here. We have four Ragavan, four Stoneforge Mystic. And then those are kind of our premier threats. And the rest of the deck is kind of just, um, you know, uh, protecting those with discard spells like Thoughtseize, Inquisition, clearing the way for Ragavan with Lightning Bolt, Prismatic Ending, other removal spells like uh, Kaya's Guile, Coligan's Command. Uh, we have our equipment package, Sword of Fire and Ice, Batter Skull, Cauldra Complete. And then we're kind of tying the room together with a couple mid-range-ish threats like Dothy Voidwalker, Season Pyromancer, and Lingering Souls. Lingering Souls especially good when you're playing with Season Pyromancer because you can discard it and then flash it back from your graveyard after you've already discarded it. Uh, Dothy Voidwalker, very good in combination with cheap removal and cheap discard, which we have a pretty good amount of. And then we are rounding out the deck with Akroxa and Akaya Orzov Usurper. I'm not 100% sure on the main deck Kaya. Uh, it was pretty good for me in the league that we played. So, you know, I, I'm not, I don't know if you want to play one or two copies or maybe zero, but I think it's good enough against a good percentage of the format that I'm willing to play the first copy in the main deck. But I don't, I don't think I'd want to play more than one copy. But yeah, everything else pretty straightforward. Nothing uh, too crazy going on here. I mean, I guess Lingering Souls is a card that not a lot of people have seen recently. And Lingering Souls is very good against everything that is not trying to play fair. Especially with how prevalent, again, as we said, Ragavan is. Lingering Souls being able to just brick wall and stonewall a Ragavan. While also you, you know, providing a card that is just a lot of value. You know, especially against all these decks that are trying to one-for-one one you and with, you know, Unholy Heat, Expressive Iteration, they're up on cards that way. Just having a, a nice, clean two or three-for-one can be really, really, really good. Uh, mana base, nothing fancy over here. There's a Savai Triumph and a Silent Clearing, just this kind of sort of flood insurance, so you can cycle those if you're getting flooded out. Um, but yeah, nothing crazy. There's a Graven Cairns, which I'm not huge on, but I think it is necessary if you're choosing to play Dothy Voidwalker. And a bunch of fetches and shocks. And then moving to the sideboard. I've seen sideboards of this deck have like a bunch of ones and twos of, two ofs. And I think that doesn't make as much sense when you're playing with Ragavan and Stoneforge Mystic. Because you just want, especially with those two cards, you just want the highest impact card. Uh, like when you're, you're kind of putting your pressure on your opponent. And you do, might not, like in those matchups where you want, like a card like Leyline of the Void, right? Leyline of the Void is good because it's consistent. You know, when it's in your opening hand, it doesn't cost you any additional mana. You're still a let you still are allowed to curve out. And in the matchups where those those particular cards are good, like Leyline, you don't necessarily have time to take a turn off to deploy a piece of graveyard hate, especially if your opponent has an answer. The idea with Leyline, like against something like Living End, is you start with a Leyline and then you're also pressuring them every turn. So they they get to a stage where even if they can answer your Leyline, they've already you know, they're already far enough behind on board between Ragavan and Stoneforge Mystic that sometimes that's not good enough. So that's the idea with Leyland of the Void. Uh, Path to Exile, 
just the most clean answer to a Merktad region. I, b I believe that's available in these colors. Again, with Stoneforge Mystic, you kind of want to make sure that you're being mana efficient. So you can, for, for example, play a St Stoneforge Mystic on turn two. Turn three, you have three mana available to go removal spell plus activate Stoneforge. So you want to kind of cheap keep your answers cheap, which is another reason why we're playing Wear Tear, which is really, really good against Urza Saga. The tear half specifically being one mana, very good. Again, really, really cheap. Void Mirror for Cascade and Tron slash Eldrazi Tron. Explosives for Hammer Time and Death Shadow, stuff like that. And then a copy of Dam to round out the sideboard when you want some additional removal. So, again, this is a uh, donation deck that we played on live on stream this past Thursday. So this is going to be a VOD. Uh, it was a lot of fun. So I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. And without further ado, let's get into some games. I'll see you back in just a little bit for our number one. On the draw, and we have Ragavan and a Stoneforge, so I keep. Sounds dope. Appreciate all the new follows, all the new subs today, chat. Remember, if you're not following the stream, be sure to hit that follow button. Greatly appreciate it. It doesn't cost you anything. Also, what doesn't cost you anything is Twitch Prime. If you have Amazon Prime, you get one free subscription per month to your favorite streamer, so make sure you are checking to see if your Twitch Prime sub is available. Watery Grave Bobble. It's a shadow. Could be shadow. Oh, hold on a second. Excuse me. We are Toxin gifting a sub to Yatsugi. Thank you very, very much for the gifted sub. We are Toxin. I appreciate that. Mm, no. I said, make sure you are following the stream. If you're not, hit the follow button. But you were already following, so... That sounds like a you problem, Squee. They just don't have a removal spell? How is this real life? I'm not used to them just not having a removal spell for my Ragaban, so now I don't know what to do. I think, to be completely honest with you, I think I'd rather have them counter this, but I really don't know. Eh, I'm going to go for high upside. I'm just going to jam the Stoneforge. I'm not dead yet. Yeah, that's fair. They could just be all on all red guards. Maybe I should just play Pyromancer then. They just counter the Pyromancer then. Hmm. If it resolves, I guess I can just discard two lands. You don't think counter seems they don't they don't usually have counter spell? I guess some of the Grixis decks usually only have like actual counter spell. Or a drought, not actual counter spell. I don't know. I kind of want to play Stoneforge. Maybe this is worse. But this still also doesn't get drowned, so. Well, the Stoneforge also plays around Drown, right? I only have one card in my graveyard. They both play around Drown. So they had Drown. Okay, that makes more sense. Why did I delete the quote about crab cakes? What do you mean? I didn't delete any quotes. I deleted no quotes, Spence. No quotes have been deleted. It's all an optical illusion. They have four cards. Uh, all right. I'm just going to play Pyromancer. I kind of want to discard the Cauldra. Discard, like, Cauldra plus Sabai Triome. Uh, 
I'm actually going to save the Thoughtsies for the turn they put Lurus in their hand, I think. I'm going to wait. Yeah, at the same time, by the time we get to 7 mana, we're just going to have 7 cards in our graveyard. They're just going to be able to counter it. So I don't know. I just don't think we're going to need it. We can grind them out with Pyromancers. I think this is fine. My thinking is it's just we're going to be... It's going to be hard for us to get to a spot where we can protect it, you know? Like, we're likely going to... Like, that's an 8-mana play, you know? So we'd likely have to cast some discard spells the turn prior, and I don't know. It just, just seems kind of hard to set up. Yeah, see, this is perfect for us. I guess they could have a Culligan's Command, but... I'll take all the Pyromancers in the world, too. Pyromancers are insane against them. To you are when no one's watching. Lurus explosives cling to dust. Hmm. So I'll take the Lurus. If I take explosives, they can just go Lurus explosives. So I don't really think that makes sense. Hmm. Yeah. Although, if I discard the Pyromancer, they can now cling the Pyromancer. So maybe I just go land, Pyromancer, discard, bolt, land? I think I like that. Yeah, let's do that. I think I like discarding bolt, bolt land. This also diversifies the amount of stuff we have in play. Like, we have two threes and two zeros. So now what they're probably going to do is go, like, what? I guess they're probably going to go land explosives for zero, but that's fine. I guess they're just going to cast the cling now. Sure. Understandable. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, let's not let's not forget we discarded a land and a bolt and drew a land and a bolt. So not much change there. Not much change there. That was funny. Mmm. Could bolt them. Hmm. Nah, I'm gonna let them take the bolt. I think that's fine. Honestly, I think if they take bolt, I'm happy. I think I'm pretty happy if they take bolt. No way we're together, but we're more than friends. So if I t if I played the bolt, they would go to eight. They would explosives for zero go to four. Yeah. Maybe. That might have been okay. They did take the Pyromancer, which I kind of assumed they were going to do. So this is just going to be Cling Pyromancer. Go to 14. That is acceptable. That is acceptable. They played Island. That's a pretty good one. That's a pretty good one. That is a pretty good one. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad. Like I get now that they can nothing now they can explode for three, but the cling is gone and we can just start exiling these, so. This uses their whole turn and they have they basically have to do it. They don't have a choice. <laughs> There's there's no way they can't not explode for three. This is bad if they have second discard spell. Yeah, that's true, but we knew two of the cards in their hand, right? Resolves. 
Mm -mm. This is their whole turn. We still have two of these in the graveyard. They have no more cling. I can't imagine they're... These, don't, these decks don't usually have more than one cling, right? They're going to let me activate the Kaya? That seems bad. Why are they doing this? I don't really understand that. Because they just have to do it in combat anyways, right? They can't go to two. Yeah, I don't really understand that. That was weird. I'm going to hold the land in my hand for Coligan's command purposes. Now they're at five. They still know about the bowl, but... This seems like a hard game for them to win. That's probably not going to do it. Probably not going to do it. Eh, sure. I will attempt to block. So they have to go seal and bounce an elemental. Or seal and kill an elemental. Uh, I mean, I could just let this hit me. Yeah, that's fine. Because they, even if they hit... Yeah, I think, I think letting this hit me is okay. It's okay. Yeah, they're dead. You remember it's been a long, lonely December. I mean, they know about the bolt, so... Dead. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, imagine <laughs> sealing and bolting a token. Not the best spot to be in. Uh, Lane Land of the Void is really good against them. And I think that's it, right? And I really don't like the discard spells in matchups like this. I like it. It's I treat this like a Jed Mirror. You just want all your top decks to be live. Uh, maybe I bring in the explosives. Could also keep in a couple discard spells, because there are spots where it's good against Luris, but... Eh... Hmm. Would I rather have explosives or two discard spells? I don't think Liliana's that good right now. The problem is Liliana's not the best against the, like, the Ragavan decks. They just gain, like, they gain too much advantage off of Ragavan before you can play Liliana. The core is like commercial, huh? Yeah, I think Kai is better than Liliana, too. Well, we got two spots. So I think it's either two explosives or two inquisition. I think on the draw, I actually don't mind having two discard spells. Just two, though. I will keep it. This matchup seems tough for them. Things that I should have said. Ballroom floor. Kai is the best Planeswalker in Modern. I don't think it's better than Red and Six, but... <clears throat> Ooh, they don't have a land? Tough. Tough. I'm gonna get Sword of Fire and Ice, I think. Yeah, I'm gonna get Sword of Fire and Ice. I mean, they should at least let me get the equipment first. Now I'm definitely going to get Sword. At least give me the option to get that, uh, you know. At least give me the option. Mm. Alright, go. What is the best deck in Modern? I mean, 
it's like some I think the best three decks are probably Hammer Time, the Teamer Cascade Rhinos deck, and the Blue Red Murktide deck. I think those are like the top three. I'm not really sure what the best one of those three is, but they're all pretty good. I prefer playing the Rhinos deck personally, but. I don't want to discard, so I'm just going to do this. I guess you can put elementals in the top tier, too, yeah. Metalwork Colossus deck in the best decks in modern. <laughs> yes, your, your pet deck is tier 1. The classic meme. Your pet deck is tier 1. Sorry, I'm sorry I forgot that. How could I? Give me a land. It's not a land. Could Inquisition myself. Pinky007 tier 1 for 5 months in a row. Thank you very much for the 5 months, Pinky. I appreciate that. Hope you're having an excellent day today. Welcome back. Uh... I think I'm taking a bolt. I might actually lose this game. As weird as that sounds. I definitely could lose this game. I mean, once I find a land, probably not, but... Still stand par, perfected kitchen version would be the best deck. It's just hard to find the right mix of, of spells, you know? It's, it's really tough. That's one of those decks that has the potential to be really good. It's just you have to find the right mix. And I don't think we've found that yet. So whatever I cast, they're going to counter here. So I th think I'm just going to fire off a of souls. Well, yeah. Because I can't cast this, so. Been here for the last time. So they probably have to counter this. I would assume, yeah. Alright, I got a four. Yeah, I might lose this game. Just bricked on land three too, too many turns. There's just so many different versions, you know? That I think that's part of the reason why it hasn't been perfected yet. There's just so many different versions. Casting this so I, like, maybe don't die to a bolt, but. Might have been worse to just cast the one from my hand. Oh, yeah, I'm just dead. You know they have Culligan's Command. Yep. I can't believe I lost that game. That was crazy. It's going good. Going good. Doing some donation decks. We 3 2 our first league. It was a lot of fun. Having some more fun. I love Thursdays. Thursdays are awesome. <clears throat> yeah, I also kind of agree with that. You know, the food deck is really very customizable in, the ter in terms of you can play different versions and the flex slots change a lot given how the meta is, you know, how the meta is... Uh, progressing so i kind of agree in the sense that i don't know that there may be, maybe there's just not a best version maybe they're all different from week to week they're all like good for different reasons week to week you know what i mean There ain't nothing I can do. Just found your stream and looked for a bit, been super fun to watch. Awesome. Glad you're enjoying the content, Blade Go. Thank you, thank you. All right, bobble down. 
Bobble down. It's not bad. They know about it too, so I might as well play it. Uh, let's get... I guess Blood Crypt in case we draw a Season Pyromancer. Makes more sense to get a red source. I think it really depends on what you're looking to like what you're looking to be good against. I think the Grixis control deck with Luris is a lot better against the other DRC Ragavan decks, because Luris is better in at the heads up, you know what I mean? But I think Merktide region is really good against you know, stuff like Team of Rhinos and, and that kind of stuff. So, I mean, Merktide is also a lot worse against Elementals, so you can make an argument there. But it kind of depends on what, you know, what you expect. I think it really just depends on what you're expecting to face, you know? You can make arguments either way. They definitely should not have waited. I don't know why they waited. That seemed really bad. Hmm. So that's gone. These are gone. I think I'm just going to go cast this, play this for one. Get a planes. Yeah, I don't really know why they waited on that. Oh, I can only cast it for zero, is that right? Can I play it for one? No, I can't, okay. Uh, Maybe I'd rather just have it stay exiled, to be honest with you. Yeah, I guess it just doesn't matter then. Sure. You can only play it for zero. I guess it's like kind of a free roll. Sure. No reason not to play it. You said this time would be the last. No, nah, you can't spend mana on it. <clears throat> I did Da Vinci. I never got the I never got around to trying it. It looks sweet though. Jeskai also seems to be the version that's been doing the best online. I know that there's one person who's top 32 to a couple challenges. I think they might have top 16 one too. And they have some league results with it. And it's just like Jeskai with four iteration prismatic ending. No ephemerates, but. Well, I still don't like grief. My, my stance on grief has not changed. Stance on grief has not changed. Sack the land first. Mm. All right, go. We are flooding, but we're we're in a good spot, I would say. They have a Lurus that's not doing much, because they have no graveyard. I think they know about the bolt, but I can't remember. I think they do. Was that a good draw, chat? Chat, was that a good draw? Death in me is a death in you. Seems like it was a good draw. I'm going to cast it now because they have the spell bomb. Yeah, they could have explosives, but. What's the ultimate? I don't want to minus it yet. No, I'm just going to plus. I could have minus on the spell bomb to maybe force the spell bomb. Might have been better. What I could have done was minus on spell bomb and then only cast half of the souls. Maybe that was a better line. But. I don't know. I, I kind of just like keep ticking up the Kaya. I think. Well, 
All the criticisms against grief decks where you go to top decks and just draw worse hold very true. I am you playing against the deck. Yeah, and I think the other biggest issue that I have with grief is just the card Ursa Saga. You know, like you do all this work to go grief, ephemerate, take all the spells, and Urza Saga just undoes all of that. You know, it's a card they can't take with grief, and it provides three cards worth of value. It's just, you know, it's just, it's just gross. That's been my experience playing with Urza Saga against the grief decks. Is you just have an Urza Saga, nothing matters. Okay, so they can bolt the Kaya, heat the Kaya, maybe? Or heat the Kaya, bolt the Kaya? Alright, and they still have Lurus in their hand. Don't forget about the Lurus, that's their last card. Pretty good one. I think I'm just going to get the Sword of Fire Nice. And then probably just play it. I think I'm just going to cast it. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Souls beating up fair mirrors? Yeah, I know, right? What's going on here? Never lost a game going Ephemerate Grief into Saga. I mean, what Saga decks were you playing against, though? I agree, maybe Hammer Time not so much, but I think maybe specifically, like, the food decks. Yeah, I don't know. I guess some of the decks maybe, but... So, Lurus Bobble? Sure. <clears throat> yeah, I love I love this uh, Full Art Stone Forge. They're pretty cheap. And I think they've gone up since I bought them, so... Can't be too, too bad. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. No blocks? Yeah, no blocks. I mean, they know I have Bolt as my last card. So... Huh. Mm -hmm. Let's get Godless Shrine. Hmm. Okay, now what? Can lead on Prismatic Ending on Lurus. Equip a Spirit and attack with everything. See what they do. Yeah, I think I like that. I want to keep the Bolt because Bolt can go upstairs. So I think I'm going to lead on this. I'm going to lead on this. The thing about this is they know my last card's Bolt. So it's like, we're not going to bait a Counterspell with this. You know, they know we have the Bolt. But... I guess this is worse if they have a red removal spell, because then I can't re-equip. Yeah, I guess that is worse against this. Sure. So maybe I should have equipped first? Probably should have equipped first, right? Yeah. I think I should have equipped first. I think I just send with two of them? Yeah, I think sending two is good, because it doesn't, cha doesn't change the clock. I thought they had Coligan's Command, and that's why I didn't want to equip first. But, yeah, I should have equipped first. It's just way better against any removal spell. So I'm just going to bolt them. Rise a little bit the music. Exclamation point music. Yeah, that's true. They would have went like 
because they also knew about the bolt, remember? So if they had Coligan's command, they probably would have just used it prior to doing anything. Yeah, you're probably right. So now I equip the Stoneforge Mystic. Now I guess they get up Coligan's command. So they go shatter this, kill this, trade here, go to one. But then we just cast souls. Sure. So they trade with Stoneforge, go to one, then we just play souls. Sure. So they go to two. Okay. Go. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Parathium with the fat clouds. I got you. That was a good one. That was a good one. All right, they're off it. Lingering Soul's really good against Grixis. Don't think I'm going to keep Six Land Stoneforge Mystic. Uh, Sand's so slow, but I think I'm going to keep it. <sighs> I'm not in love with this hand. I'm not in love with this hand. It's very slow. But I don't want to go to five. I did wash my hands. What are you talking about? They're washed. They're clean. Uh-oh. Is this Amulet or is this Belcher? I hope it's not Belcher. We probably can't beat Belcher. Definitely not with these cards. Definitely not with these cards. Still not sure if I should keep my foil sketch dressed down as chat opinion. How much are they right now? We're dead. We're dead. We are dead. Oh. Oh, okay. Or I should have played a played a fetch land to play around that. I didn't think about that. Well, let me tell you. I got cards to discard. I'm going to keep the Coligan's command in case I peel Swamp. Because maybe there's a situation where they, like, just hard cast Belcher. There's no possible way I can win this game, right? Like, zero chance. By the time I get to five mana for Batter Skull, I'm already winning the race anyways. I don't think the Batter Skull is going to matter. So I play land four, attack for four. Play land five, attack for four, they're at nine. It's still not even a lethal attack, it's only eight damage. So it only shortens the clock by one turn, right? Yeah, it shortens the clock by one turn. I don't know, maybe. But I think I'm more likely to win if I just draw a Swamp and they just raw dog a Belcher, you know? Maybe I could be wrong. Still doing Redemption on Eldraine. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Killing ourselves to come. Oh, well, yeah, it did better. We just died. We just died. Nothing mattered. Main deck defense grid, some blood bands. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. Uh, we have <laughs> absolutely nothing in our sideboard. We got some wear tears and a prayer. Explosives can kill strike at rich tokens. Mm. Lingering Souls is atrocious. So that's an easy swap. 
Uh, Kaya's Guile is also heinous. I'm actually going to keep in Prismatic Ending because I, I think my best plan is just to be able to kill Treasure Tokens. This matchup is bad. I think I want to bring in both explosives. Eh, maybe that's bad. Maybe just one. Hmm. Maybe the Kaya... Eh, the Kaya can also hit things. Hit to treasure tokens. Croaks is probably... Eh, Croaks can tag their hand, though. Maybe the Fire and Ice? There's no way I'm ever getting this with, with Stone Forge, right? Yeah, let's just do this. All right, let's go. Uh, no lands, tilt. Mm, okay, this hand has monkey into void walker. Guess I'm gonna keep it. I don't love it, but I'm gonna get a blood crypt. <clears throat> so they spiked recently, bought some for the artwork time some time ago. I did I open one? I wanna say I opened one. I wanna look at the stuff I opened from that collector box. I might have opened one. Did they spike? Like how much did they spike? Let's go through my stuff here. I thought I opened one. Uh, nope, never mind. I didn't open one. They do. They struck it rich. Okay. Mm, attack. We know we're getting a spell. It's not a very good spell, but... Hmm. So I could... I could blow up the treasure. I could play Voidwalker. Or I could play Pyromancer. I don't want to just blow up the treasure. Seems really weird, but... Kind of want to blow up the treasure. Although, if I play Voidwalker this turn, it's a three-turn clock. Maybe that's just better. Voidwalker this turn, next turn blow up the treasure. Just get more pressure in play. The reason I wouldn't want to play Voidwalker, or the reason I would want to blow up tre- Well, the reason I wouldn't want to blow up the treasure is because the three power makes it a three-turn clock. Which I- th think is slightly more important. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this play is just bad. Not sure. It's close. It's really close. All right, five you. Let's take it to 10. Reveal cards in the top of your library until you reveal a land card. Put that card into the battlefield and the rest in the bottom of your library in any order. Clash the opponent if you win. Return or cost best. Uh, I don't think I want to cast that. Now I guess I'll just blow up the treasures and play a Stoneforge. Because now I can get Cauldra. And then we just have lethal next turn. Time for a deck tech? It's always time for a deck tech. Yes, if I win a clash, it goes to the opponent's hand. That's why I didn't want to do that. Oh. This deck is so boring. Chris, huh? This hand's good. Hand's good. Feels good to be casting Lingering Souls in the year 2021. Mm -mm. 
you let go, hope you're better on your own. I mean, honestly, Lingering Souls seems like it's a decent card against all these DRC Ragavan decks, you know? Doesn't seem that bad. Even get some blockers against Hammer Time, although it's really slow against Hammer Time, but... It's the lamest deck that's ever been in Modern. Eh, Tron... Maybe Tron holds that. I don't know. It's close. Neoform Boggles? Those are good answers. Tibalt Cascade deck? Yeah. Maybe the Valky deck? I had fun playing the Valky deck, but I'm also a sicko, so... Hmm. Mono Blue Tron. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but at least Valky was a good deck. You know? Like, Valky was just far and away the best deck at that time. You can't say the same thing about stuff like Belcher, you know? The problem with KCI is nobody knew how the deck worked. <laughs> like, the only person in the entire world that knew how the deck actually functioned properly was Matt Nass. And he just crushed everybody with it. Nobody else knew how, how to play the deck. Properly. Sunrise did win a PTS. And then it got banned. Well, mostly for time concerns, but... Like, do you think Sunrise would be too good right now? Probably not, right? Yeah, Matt's win rate with that deck was absurd. Actually, just absurd. Do I discard Souls or Kroxa? Mm. Souls, right? Mm. No, nah, maybe Kroxa. Yeah, actually, it's a lot worse if I don't draw a land. Mm. The only thing is, if I play Kroxa next turn, and they don't have a fetch land, this, put, this puts the fifth card in their graveyard. That's why I don't want to play the Kroxa next turn. I'll do it. I need to find a land, though. <clears throat> I guess it's likely they just have a fetch land anyway, so maybe this is bad, but... God, land would have been so fucking good there. I'm actually debating not casting Stoneforge to turn off on Holy Heat, because if that's their if that's their fifth card, then I can just peel a land and slam Kaya. It's bad if they have a fetch land though. The only way that not playing Stoneforge is good is if they have Unholy Heat and Shock Land, but not Fetch Land, right? Mm. Guess I could just maybe hope they don't have a land. Yeah, alright, I'm just gonna play it. I don't know if this is right. It does thin my deck up a non-land, that I really need to find a land. Cauldra also beats Crooks on combat, so if they don't have a removal spell, then. They also, again, might just not have a land. Like, I want them to just go put Luris to hand pass. It's probably a little too. That's probably unlikely to happen. Alright, well, at least they're not Crooks saying. Need a land. Need a land so badly. Land, please! Fuck! Is 
So we need the, we need them to brick on land again. Okay. All right. So we need we need them to not draw land, and we need to draw land. Just put Luris in your hand. Just put Luris in your hand. That's all. Just put Luris in your hand. It's also bad. Fuck. Seems like a difficult choice. I wonder what they're going to take. Can't imagine. Yeah, I mean, I definitely got punished for not discarding the souls, but I don't know that it would have mattered. Yeah, of course, now I draw the fucking land. All right. That sucks. One turn too late. Yeah, maybe winnable. Maybe. We know they have Terminate. <laughs> Worst possible draw of the deck. So they go to 11. I think I'm going to cast the Sword. Because that makes it so they can't play Lurus. And if they play Kroxa, I just get the Sword hit them. Because we know their hand is Terminate Lurus X. <laughs> So even if they Kroxa, we can still sword hit them. It's not the worst. I mean, yeah, and if that happens... Yeah, they probably can't do that. They can't play Kroxa here, right? They're going to play Kroxa. <clears throat> I think that's really good for me. We just discard the cauldron that doesn't do anything anyways. And they take one, two, three, four, five, six, go to four. And then we have a creature they can't terminate. This is pretty good. It's actually not a bad spot. I should uh, not tap my weight. Uh oh, my power flicker chat. Is it storming outside? I hope we don't lose power. Hope we don't lose power. Land would be nice. Alright, I mean, it's not a land, but... It's not the worst. But yeah, now they have to find an answer for the sword. Because they have a Terminate in their hand. How am I doing with the heat? The AC guy finally came last week and fixed it, so AC's been working ever since. So I'm fine. It's actually working better than it was before. They had to reinstall like a whole bunch of new shit, I think. So they still have Lurus Terminate. Yeah, they need, they need a removal spell for the spirit that's not Terminate, or Cole against Command Assassin's Trophy. But yes, the spirit with the sword on it is lethal. <laughs> yeah, Cake Command would work. I mean, if they cast Lurus, they're just dead, right? Because then they can't cast Fatal Push. Yeah, Cake Command, Assassin's Trophy, Fatal Push. I do know From Ashes to do. I've actually seen them live, too. Tarmogoyf. Okay, so Fatal Push or Bust. I'm going to attack. 
think I can safely attack with both, too. Because even if they have Fatal Push, I can just cast two souls. Okay, you're dead. <laughs> I don't know how I won this game. Well, I know how I won this game. Opponent played Kroxa a turn. They probably should have just left to Terminate. But, yeah, maybe they just, like, don't have any outs to the sword anyways. Maybe they had to do that. I don't know. Yes, and because this deck is dope. Alright, so another Luris-ish deck. Definitely gonna bring in Laneline. I'm just gonna do the same thing I did last time. Bring in Laneline, cut Thoughtseize. Could also bring in Path. Because Path is good against Kroxa if I don't have Leyline, but... Yeah, I'm just gonna do this. I don't, I don't like Path in general against Luris decks. I just pretend. What is this? <clears throat> What's up, DR Nilly? Keeping Kroxa in with Leslie? What's a Leslie? Who's Leslie? Hmm. Pass good versus Goyf. Yeah, but like, I have Prismatic Ending, I have Leyline to control Goyf. I think it's fine. It's just like, I really don't like giving them a card. In these matchups, it's all about, like, drawing a cards that, like, put you down a card in the exchange are not good in these, like, matchups where everybody's just trading cards. Oh, Leyline, gotcha, okay. I was like, Leslie? What the fuck? Just gonna keep any heart, any hand that functions. I mean, it doesn't have Leyline, but I don't think I'm supposed to mulligan to Leyline. Like I beat them pretty easily without Leyline game one. Yep, Leslie. Yep, Leslie, indeed. Because I have Voidwalker, I'm gonna get Blood Crypts. Always want to wait till combat so they can't dash a second one because it's legendary. <laughs> Leslie of the Void. Hopefully they don't play a Voidwalker. That's the card I definitely don't want to see. Seems like they have it. Hmm. Okay. It's beatable. Hmm. So, there is some consideration to get the Kroxa into play prior to them playing Voidwalker, so I can have it in my graveyard. But I think it's more important to play the Voidwalker to pressure Red and Six. So I think I'm just going to do that. I can even set up like an Inquisition if they don't kill the Voidwalker. Although they're probably going to kill it. And I guess that's a good argument, is if they have a removal spell, playing Crocus is slightly better. But. Because, like, I don't really want to play Souls into the Red and Six. So if they have a removal spell, I'm probably just going to go Inquisition Crocus the next turn. Which is not, that's not a bad turn, but. Okay. So they probably also have a removal spell. Well, no, they would have cast the removal spell first, right? So they wouldn't exile the Inquisition. So maybe they don't have removal. Mm -hmm. 
uh, took Inquisition. Hmm. Sequencing. Sequencing. Darkness for forgiveness. They have two cards. Hmm. Oh, planes with Kroxa, huh? I don't know how I feel about that one. The old planes Kroxa. Hmm. I think I'm just going to cast Souls because I attack Ren for three. Goes to two. If they minus on the Souls, then the Ren's at one and the other Souls token kills it. So I think. I think I'm just going to do that. Yeah. And I think I want to get another red source in case I find Season Pyromancer. Also, I have the Kroxa. So I would like to get a red source here. It is painful, but... I'm going to get Sacred Foundry. <clears throat> Stupid basic planes. Basic planes plus Kroxa, not a combo. Not a combo. Okay. I don't really care about that. Don't particularly care about that. What do they have exiled? Inquisition, Bloodstained Mire. Let's keep an eye on that. Nice thing about Voidwalker is they're never going to be able to uh, to get Delirium. So I could even trade here if I wanted to. That's a screenshot? What is? Yeah, Voidwalker is really good. When they can't kill it, it's nice. Okay. They have one card left. I mean, it's obviously not a removal spell. Because if they had a removal spell, they would have just killed this a million turns ago. So I'm just going to block. And I can still kill Ren anyways. And then just flash back two souls. I guess double flashback souls is bad against... Uh engineered explosives so maybe i just go croaks a single flashback oh inquisition into the souls plus croaks so yeah yeah let's actually just go croaks a plus single flashback this is way better if they'll last cards explosives which it could be they might have wanted to slow roll it ancient grudge huh okay Your turn. Your turn. The Voidwalker is nice. Voidwalker is nice. Uh-oh. Did you hear the chat? It's the thunder. The thunder. Monka W. No. We can Kroxa next turn, guaranteed. Mm, no, because we have basic planes. We have this fucking basic planes. Oh, but we can sack Voidwalker to get a land. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, we can sack the Voidwalker to get a land. Which I don't think I want to do. It seems like kind of a spew. Oh, I can get the Ren and Six. That's way better. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Yeah, I'm going to do that. That's probably worth it. Well, or I could just draw land anyways. I think I'd rather keep the Voidwalker in play. So let's just go, like, attack for four, leave back a spirit. 
And just play Kroxa. Yeah, it does, but I think I'd rather just jam the Kroxa. Maybe this is greedy, but... One, two, three, four, five. Keep the souls in the graveyard. Let's just move on. Also, the nice thing about keeping the Voidwalker in play is it means that their Lurus still just doesn't do anything, right? Whereas if I sack this, they can start putting cards in their graveyard. So. Discarded Bobble. Mardu Stoneblade. Now, we're not scamming people. It's just like normal Mardu good cards. Mardu good cards. And some Lingering Souls. That's the joke. Get it? Hmm. Don't think that works the way you want it to. I think we are going to be two and one. I think we are going to be two and one. Only losing to getting scammed by Belcher. We did get scammed by Belcher. I just want to cast Batter Skull. Is it correct? I don't know, probably not, but I just want to cast Batter Skull. No five O's yet. We're getting there. We're trying. We're not going to get a five O this league, unfortunately. <laughs> Are they going to triple block the Groxa? If we're not miserable. We saw a heart stone gray. And this is getting there. They're off it. Two and one. Let's go. Mm -mm. Green Tron. Okay. Makes sense. Wait, what? I've never seen Damien Desposito 10 play a basic pl basic planes before. I've never seen this happen. Clip this shit. I play against this person a lot, too. Oh, they're just boring hammer time? Well, that's boring. That's boring. Maybe Giver of Runes. I think I'm going to cast Inquisition. Yeah. Me to you. All right, they got a Nexus and a Drum. And they're probably going to put Luris in their hand this turn. <clears throat> Soul Sisters, huh? I know Plea Chow, usually in the chat, Plea Chow plays a lot of Soul Sisters. Come on, just put the Luris in your hand. Just do it, you got nothing else to do. Come on, just just, just put the Luris in the hand. Yeah, Alright, fine. This looks easier with time. I mean, I could just kill this and pay a mana, right? Mm -hmm. Are they animating the Nexus? They just played it. <laughs> Opponent! Opponent, please. Ooh. I kind of want to play that. Yeah, let's play that. Let's play that. I'm down. To get easier than this. You didn't wait for me. 
This has got to be the Lurus turn, right? There it is. There's the Lurus turn. I think I might just give them an extra card, because I really want to start beating down with Cauldra. Hmm. If I'm doing that, I should probably... I should probably call Dread before casting the Thoughtseize and leave up a mana to let them make them like try to play around a removal spell. Alternatively, I could just Thoughtseize the Lurus, pay the mana, play a tap land. I kind of like that less though. So let's just go Mountain. <coughs> it sort of answers it. Sort of, I think, right? Is this worded? Whenever this creature deals combat... Yeah, it sort of prevents it, but they still take the trample damage. Alright, so they take four. Oops, it never leaves... Not easy. The pain in your heart will die. I'm just gonna take Luris. Yeah, that's bad. If they draw and cigar is aid, so I'll hope they don't draw cigar is aid. I have to take Luris though. I think. If I don't take Luris, they just get to go Luris Paladin. Maybe I'm not supposed to call you there. Maybe that was bad. I'm supposed to just pay the mana. I mean, they would have drawn the gift anyways, but. Exploitable way to use Phyrexian type of creature. Like, in what way? Like, what are you thinking? Carry mm. on. Alright, they got a gift. Oh, like a lord kind of thing. Uh, adaptive automaton? But that one's kind of slow. Bad Moon is modern legal, isn't it? What if you just played like a mono black infect deck with like Plague Stinger, Frexing Crusader, Bad Moon? Just throwing that out there. <laughs> just throwing that out there. Is it good? I mean, probably not, but. So they have no cards in their hand. Oh, they got a Shadow Spear. Oh. Well, I guess in that case, I'm just going to play Stoneforge Mystic. Yeah. I wonder why they got Shadow Spear. I mean, it doesn't make it indestructible, but why does that matter? Still, his first strike. <clears throat> Like a phoenix, I will burn. It's gonna get the sword. This is goodbye, don't follow me, follow me. Worth noting, Bad Moon is, is uh, symmetrical. So if your opponent is playing with black creatures as well, they will get pumped under the Bad Moon. Maybe it's called Bad Moon because the card is just terrible. Maybe that's the joke. <laughs> we will carry on. Here now. The blocks. Take two. Upstairs. Want to go for Sword Over Batter Skull? They have the Batter Skull blanked. 
and I'd rather just start drawing cards. They can't really blank the sword, because I can sort up a trample creature. So I think it's better off for me to get the, the sword there. And, like, the only way to make the batter skull is good is if I equip it here. But I just, like, I'd rather, I think I'd rather just draw some cards, to be honest with you. Yeah, I could have done that. But isn't, like, this just going to win me the game as well? And it's cheaper, it's more mana-efficient, you know? Like, I can just do this. I think this is fine. You're wondering... We're one. Yeah, Sword also draws cards. Mm -mm -mm. And I can kill the giver. And then I can probably kill the other giver. Unless they give it protection, but they let it die. Uh, just gonna ending this thing. I have to pay mana, huh? Just gonna get a mountain. Eh, I'll just pass. Whatever. I'm just gonna hold up Colgan's command. I can't really see myself losing as long as I hold up K command. They have no cards, so it just doesn't matter anyways, but... What's a good format to farm ticks and play points in? Uh, I mean, honestly, modern. If you, if you, I think if you played the Rhinos deck and just like played that deck for you know eight, just a million leagues a day, you could definitely farm with that deck. It's easy to play. It's not you know most of the lines are pretty non-intuitive. And if you want to learn how to cyborg with it, I got a cyborg guy coming out tomorrow. So be sure to check that out. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna finish it up tonight. I'm already like 14 pages in, and I got most of what I wanted to do, but I'm gonna finish it up tonight. Everyone's take it. Teamer Rhino is the crashing footfalls deck. So Teamer Cascade. FNM tomorrow. Well, it'll be out tomorrow morning. So you'll have it tomorrow. You'll have it by FNM. Don't worry. It'll be out tomorrow morning. I just gotta I just gotta finish it up and tidy it up tonight after the stream. <clears throat> Why are we still playing this game? They can't beat the board, let alone they, they can't beat my hand. They don't know my hand, but... I have a heart my my cell counts. Zach. I become a crooked son. Do I like rhinos over food? I still enjoy playing the food decks. I don't have the rhinos deck built in paper, so I'm in paper, FNMs, I'm playing, still playing food. Um, but I don't know. Like, I don't know what it is about the 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 food deck that I don't know. It's just, it's hard, like, I think that the hard thing about the food deck is, like, when you're playing an online, and you're playing Magic Online, the format is way more wide open than it is in paper, for the most part, and it's really hard to, like, you have to get the metagame right in terms of your, your flex slots and what colors you want to play in the food decks, so it's, the food deck is a lot more flexible, which means it's just more, you know what I mean? I think that's where I'm at, but I, I like the food decks a lot. Yeah, you're playing against Reed Duke. All right, I'll take two poison. Yeah, there's also less clicks. I mean, I don't mind that as much. Like, I, I've not, I've, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't come close to timing out with a food deck, but well, I guess that's not true. I played the Gold Guard version. I almost timed out, but.
Love the food deck, but after my run with Elementals, I'll be on it for the foreseeable future. That's kind of where I was at with Rhinos, you know? Like, I love playing the food deck, and I was having good success with it, but then I just started crushing people with Rhinos, so. It's not like I'm done playing food. Like, I'm gonna play it from time to time. It's just, you know. When I'm looking to win and looking to get trophies, I just, I, I want to play, I want to play Rhinos. Because I think Rhinos gives me the best chance to win. Even though I enjoy the food decks a lot more. Trying to run up my Glock when they're when they're down on time, maybe. Alright, EE. -E, wear tear path. Maybe Doom. Um I think this is not a Voidwalker matchup. I think it might also not be a Ragavan matchup, especially on the draw. And then got the Groxa. What do you think about this chat? I think I like this. Load up on cheap removal. Lingering Souls, I guess you could argue that maybe Souls is worse than Ragavan. How do you feel about that? Souls versus Ragavan. On the draw in this matchup. The thing I most dislike about MH2 is how much more expensive. Yeah, that's true. It did increase the price a lot. That is definitely a downside. <clears throat> You like Dam? Maybe Dam over the third Souls. Maybe that. Dothy does stop Luris, but I don't know. I feel like that's too narrow. Like, a lot of the time they're going to play Luris, play one thing, and then you're just going to kill the Luris. You know? So I just don't really think you need to be worried about Luris. And Voidwalker doesn't block. And also, all of their cards suck. <laughs> like, I, I, you know what I mean? Like, individually, Voidwalker doesn't hit any good cards. They're all just... On individually, they're just all bad. So, like, you're not getting any good cards off of them. You know what I mean? Like, the Hammer Time, Hammer Time is a great deck. Don't get me wrong. It's just individually, with Voidwalker, all of their cards are bad. You know what I mean? This hand's awesome. Missing a cheap removal spell, but I'm definitely going to keep... Can't complain with thoughts he used into Stoneforge into Pyromancer. That's what I didn't want to see. That is definitely what I did not want to see. This card's so good on the play. So good on the play. Just like, what am I going to do? Time walk myself? Sucks. My thought process is I want to kill this. And then if they have Stoneforge, I can Thought Seize their Hammer. So I think I'm going to go with that. Like, I think, unless I want to literally time walk myself, I'm going to have to give them a card, and I refuse to time walk myself, so. Well, let them, let them get their two for one, it's fine. Well, hold on a second, chat. Good. I thought I had my window open. Well, it's raining outside, and I thought I had my window open, so I wanted to close it, but my window is closed. All right, what'd they do? Stoneforge got a Shadow Spear. They love getting the Shadow Spear. Hmm. 
Well, now I kind of want to just play my Stone Forge. Maybe that means they just have Hammer in their hand that I'm a dumbass for making this play, but... I didn't go to the bathroom. I just went over to my window. <laughs> But by not casting these time turn one we time walk ourselves anyways. Well, not when we're killing a creature. We're still doing something on turn one, right? <laughs> <clears throat> More stone forges, huh? Alright. Did not pee out the window. Now they get the hammer. So now we can go Thoughtseize plus put in Cauldra. We know they have Shadow Spear, three unknowns. Alright, let's Thoughtseize first before we do anything else, because then we can decide what we want to do with the rest of our turn. Uh, don't think that's the card you want. I don't think that is the card you want. Okay, well I'm definitely not, now I'm definitely not afraid. Nothing for you. Now. Oh, you would seize turn two and not play Stoneforge. Well, the issue with that is that I'm not being mana efficient, right? Because I had a third land, I wanted to be able to go play a one drop and activate the Stoneforge on three. So I, I feel like that was better. Oh no. Oh no. I knew that was going to happen too. I knew it was going to happen. I saw it coming from a mile away. Saw it coming. Are they gonna? There's no way they're gonna try again, right? Please don't do it again. Okay. <laughs> I thought they were gonna do it again. I thought they were gonna do it again. They're like, it didn't work the first time. It'll surely work the second time. Yeah, that's fair. I gotcha. Hmm. I think I'm going to play Pyromancer. Discard the Stone Forge and the Fire Ice, because they're both bad against this. It's a little bit greedy if I don't find a land to hold up path, but maybe this line is too greedy. Not if I have path up, right? Yeah, see, we're good. We're good, chat. We're good. I mean, what, what did you want to do? Just, like, hold up all your mana? I guess you could ending the Colossus Hammer and then just pass with path up. I don't know. I think it's okay to take a little bit of a risk there. Just any land is good, you know? I'm also going to fetch before they resolve Saga in case they have Needle. You never know. I'm not going to chance it. Not enough white. Well, I have all the fetch lands. Like, every fetch land is a white source. Clouds are going bye-bye. Well, not if they have a second Shadow Spear, because we already discarded the Shadow Spear. That's why I took the Shadow Spear. Because if the Shadow Spear was still in their deck, they could have gotten Shadow Spear, activated it, and then sealed the Cauldra, but... I do have hotkeys for yes and no, yeah. I use one for yes and two for no. Uh... Ending this and just shove. Oh yeah, they did. EE -E for zero. Pop it. Oh, but then my elementals die. Yeah, this was dumb. Whatever. It's fine.
I'm giving them a good double block on the stone forge, which they, you know what I mean? I'm giving them a good double block here if they, they just take seven and they die to bolt. So they have to double block here. Don't understand. Yeah, it's fine. But we still have bolt path up. Like, I can't possibly imagine losing this game. All right, you're five. Or er, you're four. Go. Your turn. No, because they go to four. Not quite dead. Oh, I could have pathed, right? No, because if I path one of them, they chump block, still go to four, right? Okay. <clears throat> Just path up your steel paladin, right? So they can't equip. Does it help speed things up? Yeah, a little bit. I think so. They could have played Shadow Spear that turn, but instead chose to cast Hammer. Yeah, the turn they played Hammer, could have played Shadow Spear. Attack you. All right. Three and one, chat. Three and one. Three and one. <laughs> yeah, I should I should have killed the hammer before. I should have I should have killed all of their permanents. This deck feels pretty good. I like this deck a lot, parallel bars. Uh I mean. I'm still going to keep Monkey Monkey Kaya, but we obviously have a, a brick in our hand. Yeah, Voidwalker's been good. We played against, like, a, a Jun Luris deck, and Voidwalker just crushed them. It was also really good against the Grixis deck we played against. We played against two, well, we played against three Luris decks. It's not good against Hammer Time, but it was good against the other Luris decks. Oh, we're going to get Trond. I hope they're playing Eldrazi Tron, because if they're playing Tron Tron, we probably can't win. That was a good draw, though. Okay, good. We can maybe beat this. Okay. Huh. Pretty sure playing Stoneforge is better than dashing. I think. I think Shadow is playable right now. I think the Spiked Shadow deck with, with Dress Down looked really good when I played it. I did a YouTube video with that deck. If you want to go check it out, head over to the YouTube. Also, you should be subscribed to the YouTube. Tons of content over there. But yeah, I uh, uploaded a video with Spike's Grixis Shadow deck. Felt pretty good. I have another dismember. Okay. Uh, so dash... Dash Ragavan ending the map. I could also Kaya down tick on the map. But dash Ragavan ending map lets me batter skull next turn if I draw an untapped land. <clears throat> no, you can't ending saga. It's a non land permanent. Hmm. Hmm. I'm not sure which line is better. I would love to be able to cast this batter skull. Well, I guess the line that lets me cast... Mm, no, because they just block with Saga Token. <coughs> hmm. This is tough. So if I go Swamp Dash Ragavan, hold up Foundry. 
then I can ending the map with four mana sources and leave the treasure in play. It's a really tough choice. The other line is like Dash Ragavan ending the map off of the treasure and play Triome. But I feel like that's the worst line because it doesn't give me the option to cast Batter Skull. I think I'm going to do this. I think I like this line. I want to at least leave myself the ability to cast Batter Skull if I draw an untapped land. Because Batter Skull is really good in this matchup. <clears throat> They can have thought not. Well, if they thought not, they wouldn't take Kaya. They would play. They would take Batter Skull, one thousand percent. You know. So now I can go Thought Seize, cast Ragavan, play Tapland next turn. Batter Skull. I can't dash the Ragavan. They just trade. I think that's bad. Well, actually, maybe the trade's good. Maybe I just let them trade. And just play this. Oh. Okay. I guess they're just off it. That's weird. Anyways, I don't know what that was. That game definitely was not over. Take those. Right here with my friends. Mmm... I think Kaya on the draw is not great. I think I'd rather have ending. I think I like doing this. <clears throat> I think Souls is kind of bad. I'm not a huge fan of Sword of Fire Dice because the other shit's colorless. And I think Kaya on the draw is not great. Yeah, maybe Damned Path is good. Over... How good is Voidwalker against them? Maybe Voidwalker's not where I want to be. Why no Alpine Moon? I think you'd rather just load up on Wear Tear to deal with Saga. I prefer Wear Tear. Well, it's I guess it's mainly for Chalice, but if we cut Ending and bring in... We still have a decent number of outs to Chalice, right? We have Wear Tear, we have Culligan's Command. We don't have a ton. Like, I guess you could do a dam in two paths, maybe, instead of the Prismatic Endings. And then if they have Chalice, you have, like, a decent split of ones and twos. So maybe you just don't care about Chalice. Inquisition also could get cut. Because it, like, they're going to play Chalice. Well, it does take Chalice, but... Because you can if you have it on one, you can take Chalice. What if we did this? Kind of like that. Two path, two ending, one dam. Yeah, let's do that. <clears throat> That's why I like Voidwalker. You know? If you like Voidwalker and take their... I don't know, big dummy. Uh, sand sucks. Ship it. Alright, sand's good. Put back... Right, the basic... Let's be cutting bolt. Cutting bolt's not unreasonable. Cutting bolt is not terrible. All right. Let's see if they have. Let's see if they have their uh, what you call it. They play an Urborg usually. I think they play an Urborg, right? Well, show me their Urborg. Show me the Urborg. Oh. Ah. Uh... No, I'm going to play this, because I can go Fuse next turn after they make a Saga token. Alright, they got a 1-1. One, one. Oh, they can have Cavern. They don't have Cavern. Okay. Go. They didn't make a Saga token? Okay. I don't know why I'm fetching here. Yeah, I don't know why I fetched. I thought I was going to fuse, but I'm obviously not fusing.
I do want to stone rain them. I guess they were... Okay, they also didn't make a token. Uh, I guess they're just off it. I guess they're just off it. Sometimes you gotta just be off it, you know? Well, they have the cavern. Good thing we have two answers to Thought Nuts here. You think they have a basic swamp? There's no fucking chance they have a basic. There is absolutely no chance they have a basic. I'm still going to path on their upkeep, but... I know sometimes they have a basic wastes, but... Waste is not a color. This is colorless mana. They drew another Thought Nazi here? We might actually lose this game. That's a really good draw. If you love the guilt, then let it die. Alright, go. They're gonna draw a Smasher now, too. Watch. No, okay. Did I screw this game up? I don't think I screwed this game up. Yo, losing this game is really tilting. How are we jumping? Jumping with what? Our pirates are getting exiled. <clears throat> Wow. Can't believe I lost that game. They also just, like, didn't make a token. Ugh. Ah. Alright, let's do this. Path. Uh... I guess I'll keep two bolts in. I do want another path, though. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how I lost that game. I'm not going to keep a one lander. Uh, okay, I think. I think this hand's fine. It's not great, but might have a fast croak, so. Standard Etron win, yeah. Something like that. Classic Etron. Hmm. I think I'm supposed to blow up the map. Yeah, let's do it. Like souls in this matchup? Maybe. I could see it. Hold up Guile in case they slam Thought Knots here. Yeah. Let's pass. Not playing Kroxa feels kind of bad, but I can also just uh, Kroxa plus Voidwalker next turn. So it's not the end of the world. Okay. Guess I can just kill it. Just go eat it, exile. Hmm. Eh, no, I think I'm just gonna go tap land, Voidwalker into Kroxa. Yeah, I think I like that. <clears throat> Black source. I think that's better. Oh. Well, they have an answer to that, so let's not cast that quite yet. Let's go Black Black, Voidwalker, and then Blake Roxa.
And then whatever this is gets exiled. <laughs> well, if they bomb the Voidwalker, that's fine. Right? Because then I can just slam the Void Mirror. But I obviously don't want to play the Void Mirror when they have the Ratch Bomb in play. Oh, perfect. So we can attack. Prismatic getting the Ratchet Bomb, force the issue, and then play Void Mirror. Then we're good. Perfect. Perfect. And we get to Kirk's the next turn. Yeah, we should be chilling. Should be chilling. <clears throat> Warping whale. All right, deal. Deal. What's up, Alana? Let's see if they have the cavern. If they have cavern. They could play through it, but now it's gonna be tough. Black, black. No. Black, black. Red, red. One, two, three, four, five. <clears throat> this is why they draw Cavern. Well, yeah, no, that's like their one out to Void Mirror, right? Is Cavern, but... But even if they have Cavern now, we have a 6-6 six, six at play. So is it even that good? Maybe. Depends on what they're, what it is. But they just can't kill the 6-6 six, six ever, you know? <laughs> like, honestly, I probably just don't even attack with it. <clears throat> hmm. I guess if I attack... They have to trade for Thought Knots here and, and Reshaper. Hmm. I guess that's fine, right? Yeah, I guess attacking is actually fine. Because I get a card off of Thought Knots here. I guess maybe they just take it. They could also just take it, but... But then I can, like, I don't know, gain four... Do the thing. And, like, chump block the Thought Knots here for a turn, maybe. <clears throat> so now I can... Yeah, now I can just go gain four life, make a token, chump block here, stay at 11. Yeah, make a 1-1 one, one gain four. Jump block here. Could have maybe traded for the Scion. I'm not even going to bother thought seizing them. Seven go to four. Actually, this attack might be bad. Because if I make this attack, they go to five. They attack me for seven, leave back the Scion, and then if I brick, I'm dead. He also dies to Smasher this way. Maybe now I have to play defense. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna pass. Wait till I draw just any spell and we're, we're fine. Thought seizing seems really bad. I guess Thoughties could take a Smasher. <sighs> Alright, go. This is funny. I got some Fruit Monster, Strawberry, Kiwi, Pomegranate. It's dope. It's nice. Alright, I drew a spell. We're good. 
No, I definitely don't attack. Get Zekaldra. Actually, it's probably safer to just get Batter Skull. Because that one's actually more castable. Still just passing, though. Mm -mm. Does Void Mirror do much versus Eldrazi? Well, the thing is, the only castable spells that in their deck right now are Eldrazi. They can't cast anything else. No Dismembers, no Warping Whales, no Ratchet Bombs, no Karns. Like, they, they literally can't cast anything else. I'm trying to think of how I realistically lose this game. Because I can attack now. Now they probably double block. I think attacking is good. Batter Skull is castable with Mirror. Because I'm still using colored mana to suspend it. That's not how that works. Yeah. Yes, Waste is considered colorless. It doesn't say cast a colorless spell. It says if no colored mana was spent to cast it. So as long as I'm using colored mana to cast the Batter Skull, it's fine. Right. The only reason they can cast Eldrazi is because they have Cavernous Souls, which makes colored mana. Urborg all his dusts. Yeah, that might be me. But even then, I could just pick up the Batter Skull, right? Like, even if they had that, I could just pick up the Batter Skull, replay it. Alright, should be good. Should be good. All right, let's go. Untap. <laughs> okay. Uh, man, that's funny. Deck. How do you feel about Void Mirror versus Elementals? I think it's good against Elementals. It slows them down a lot. Like, it's not a card that's going to win the game by itself because they still can start casting their five drops when they get to five mana, but it slows them down a lot, and... The best draws in their deck are the ones that involve, you know, Evoke Creature plus Ephemerate. And shutting that off, shutting that off and making them slow down a little bit is nice. So I would bring it in against Elementals. <laughs> Yahtzee! Yahtzee! I'm just not even going to cast it. I'm just not even going to cast it. You can't cast this member. You cannot go to less than zero life. They're trying to use black off of Gavern to cast this member. All right. Void Mirror good against Tron. Four and one. Not bad. Deck felt pretty good. We got obliterated by Charbelcher. But, you know, that's kind of to be expected when you're playing a deck like this. So. Hope to dodge Belcher, I guess. That's all I got. That has to be money, right? <laughs> 